So starting off this list strong, in at number 10, let's talk about the 1954 meteorite that fell from space and it actually hit someone. This right here is Anne Elizabeth Fowler Hodge. She became a part of history when she survived being struck by a fragment of a meteorite. I mean, how many people can say that? The Silicago meteorite is the first documented extraterrestrial object to have injured a human being. So let me tell you guys what happened. A piece of this meteorite crashed through the roof of a farmhouse located in Alabama and it bounced off a large wooden console radio and then it hit Hodges while she was napping on the couch. Imagine like that's how you woke up. You woke up by being hit by a piece of meteorite that came from outer space. This made headline news and I was looking into what happened to that meteorite because maybe that woman can sell it and become super super rich. Well, I'm not exactly sure on how much they sell for but uh, probably a lot right but this meteorite was actually confiscated by the police who turned it over to the United States Air Force so yeah this woman lucked out I don't know why she wasn't able to keep it. In our number 9 spot today we have cosmic disappearance. Some sort of unidentified thing that is larger than anything in our known universe is sucking portions of the Milky Way away. I know, it's terrifying and it definitely is concerning considering it's the place that we all call home. This discovery came in 2009 when researchers first found a cluster of galaxies moving at extremely fast speed towards a small area of sky. This area is located between the constellations of Centaurus and Vel and whatever this whole thing is, it has experts completely stumped as to what it could be. For now, it remains a space mystery that has been dubbed Dark Flow so that it can sit on the shelf with the other terrifying space mysteries like dark energy and dark matter, whatever those are. In our number 8 spot today, we have Tycho. This is what is being called a zombie star. This frightening name comes from the fact that this star was once a white dwarf, which is basically what is left over after a star exploded, but its mass was not enough to become a neutron star or a black hole. What's different about these zombie stars however is that they have gobbled up a bunch of mass from another nearby star which then leads to them exploding all over again in what is called a type 1a supernova. These blasts are insanely luminous and bright. Some even say that they have the light of one billion suns. This is all to say that they are insanely interesting objects and events that exist in the universe and they are also thought to be helping scientists study what the heck dark energy is. In our number 7 spot today we have Oumuamua. A few years ago scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system and they called it Oumuamua and it was widely agreed that it was an interstellar comet that had swung out from around another star. Upon closer examination however they realized that something was propelling it and causing it to accelerate and this is when the debate started because they just don't really know why. Evie Loeb who's a Harvard University astrophysicist proposed the idea that rather than a comet this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail, which is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that accelerates by being pushed by solar radiation. Other scientists didn't agree with this and instead said that it's possible that hydrogen ice could have melted off of the object in a way that would mimic a rocket engine or something of that nature. Avi then wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before it reached our solar system. I guess all in all we just have to wait it out while the scientists debate and gather more evidence to really know what is going on behind this one. In our number 6 spot today we have the wandering moon. The moon is apparently slowly, sadly, moving away from earth. When I say slowly I mean slowly as it's at a rate of about half an inch a year, but still when we're talking about our cosmic best buddy, the moon isn't only the thing that lights up our night sky, the moon plays a vital role to our lives here on earth due to its great companionship and its gravitational pull. The moon's gravity is what causes the tides of our ocean, so without our moon who knows what would happen to our marine ecosystem. Systems. The moon is also responsible for the axial tilt of Earth and how it stays in relatively the same place. Without the moon, we either wouldn't have any tilt at all, or we would be tilted all the way. This would mean that we would either have no seasons, or some of the most extreme seasons any of us have ever seen. While it doesn't appear the moon is going anywhere soon, sometimes we just have to keep an eye on her to make sure. In our number 5 spot today, we have the mysterious gap. Basically, a new analysis by scientists.
scientists at MIT of ancient meteorites found something new and super interesting. In the early solar system, there was what is referred to as a protoplanetary disk of dust and gas that rotated around the sun, and eventually it coalesced into the planets that we know and love today. So this new study and analysis suggests that this sort of mysterious gap existed within this disk somewhere around, I don't know, 4.567 billion years ago, and it was in an area near where the asteroid belt is today. The reason this gap is mysterious is because it isn't quite clear what the cause of this gap was. There are a few possibilities, including Jupiter, during the time when it began to take its shape, because of its extremely large gravitational pull, it could have pushed gas and dust towards the outskirts, which then would leave a gap in the developing disk. There are other possibilities, but regardless of whatever caused this gap, it is said to have likely served as a cosmic boundary that kept material on either side from interacting with each other. In our number four spot today, we have a blitzar. So normally, when stellar black holes are formed, they are the result of a large star exploding into a supernova. This then has the core normally collapsing into either a neutron star or a black hole. Blitzars are a hypothetical type of neutron star where they spin so fast that if they slow down, they'll collapse right into a black hole. I do understand that they are theoretical at this point, but some researchers believe that these stars might be an explanation for fast radio bursts should we find that they in fact do exist. In January of 2015, there were seven different events that experts thought could be attributed to blitzars, but it is thought that they actually might occur once every 10 seconds in our observable universe. The magnetic field around a blitzar would clear anything prior to it turning into a black hole, which means that no nearby material would fall in upon the initial collapse, which means that there is no burst of gamma rays or x-rays, which is usually seen when other black holes form, and this is exactly why, if they do exist, they are hard to detect. Should we come to find concrete evidence of their existence, these guys would prove incredibly valuable insight into the formation of black holes. In our number three spot today, we have Hoag's object. Okay, so there are different shapes to galaxies. That's not the weirdest thing in the world. You know we live in a spiral shaped one, it's beautiful, there are other galaxies called ellipticals that are more like oval shaped, but one galaxy in particular, which is now called Hoag's object, is truly like none we've ever seen. This galaxy has a yellow core, and this core is surrounded by an outer ring of blue stars that are much younger than the core, but in the middle between the two, there's just nothing, and researchers are completely stumped as to how this could have formed. The galaxy was first discovered in the 1950s, and since then, there is one leading theory as to how it could have been formed, but it still isn't concrete. Basically, this leading theory suggests that perhaps a small galaxy sped through a larger disk-shaped galaxy, which then created this bizarre situation, but the problem with this theory is that there are no signs of any nearby galaxies that could have served as this sort of bullet in this scenario. If that happened, it also would have sped up the core of Hoag's object, but we can observe it as moving quite slowly, so that also rules out this theory. There have been other galaxies discovered that have some similar characteristics to this one, but none share all of the qualities seen in this very bizarre galaxy. In our number two spot today, we have Humea. Back in 2017, this dwarf planet passed between Earth and a distant star, which allowed scientists to get a better look at it, and thus they were able to discover some new findings. Humea sits in an area beyond Neptune that is called the Cooper Belt, and it is actually one of the largest objects inside of the belt. Before the new discoveries in 2017, we already knew that this dwarf planet was weird. I mean, it has kind of a weird elongated shape, it has two moons, and its day only lasts four hours, which means that it's the fastest spinning large object in our entire solar system. It is thought that its fast spin might be responsible for its weird shape, but either way, scientists were quite surprised in 2017 when they realized that this strange planet actually has rings. This means that Humea likely had some sort of collision, and probably not too long ago, relatively speaking. This collision likely happened somewhere from one billion to several hundred million years ago, but the search for the origins of these rings brings a whole new mystery to the dwarf planet. In our number one spot today, we have magnetars. These space things are actually a type of neutron star, but what makes them different is that they have this insanely powerful magnetic field. Like we are talking 1,000 times stronger than a regular neutron star, or about a trillion times stronger than the magnetic field that Earth has. That means that these type of stars would have enough magnetic power to wipe every credit card on Earth, even from a distance halfway to the moon. They're the most magnetic stars in the entire universe. This is all very cool and interesting, but it's also important to note that if you were to venture within about 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers of one of these stars, you 
would die very quickly. The magnetic field would destroy your body. It would tear electrons from your atoms, which would then basically turn you into a cloud of monotonic ions or single atoms without electrons. This is all to say that next to black holes, these are one of the most bizarre objects in the entire universe. So let's get this started in at number 10 with earthworms. Yeah, that's right, thousands of earthworms were seen falling from the sky in Norway and this was back in 2015. And apparently this isn't the first time that earthworms have fallen from the sky there. A man named Karsten Ersted discovered that it was raining earthworms while he was skiing. At first he thought that these earthworms came from the ground, but there was over 50 centimeters of snow on the ground. so. Yeah, that would kind of make it impossible, wouldn't it? Well, he reported that there were thousands of worms falling from the sky, and at first he thought that they were dead. But then he picked them up, and they were still alive. I mean, this is so freaking gross. I would literally go straight down the hill with my skis and never look back. And I guess this might be a fisherman's dream, because that is like unlimited bait, if bait is just falling from the sky. Moving into number 9, we have the Roswell UFO incident that took place in 1947. Take a look at this. This came crashing down. Down to Earth, and if you search this into Google, you can find these images as well. Clearly, looks like an alien, and also you can see more UFO pictures. Can this really be a UFO crash site? Well, there are obviously many conspiracy theories around this crash because the US military stated that it is a United States Army Air Force balloon crash, while others say that this might be one huge cover up and it's actually an alien spacecraft. What do you guys believe? I'm going with. It might be an alien spacecraft. And at number 8, we have a piece of the moon. It's always scarier taking pieces of the moon because you just never know what type of airborne bacteria can live on it. There was actually a lunar meteorite found in northern Africa not too long ago, and just a tiny piece of it sold for more than $600,000. Imagine a piece of the moon just fell into your backyard, making you instantly a millionaire. There hasn't been a long term human exposure to the lunar environment, but apparently, the exposure to lunar dust can actually result in severe health risks from direct exposure or exposure from over time. So saying that, whoever owns a piece of the moon, hopefully they're keeping it well contaminated. Alright, number 7, you guys saw it in the intro of this video, you saw a little clip of it, but let's talk about the 2017 which was uh, not too long ago, while well, I'm talking about the discovery of the Uma Uma, which was the first interstellar object ever detected in our solar system. Aumuamua, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. Probably not, but in Hawaiian, it actually translates to first time visitor from far away. Of course, when this object was made public, millions of people questioned, is it aliens? Others ask, where did it come from? Or what does this mean for us? Could this be an invasion on Earth? Well, scientists from Harvard University believe yes. This could actually be signs of alien civilization. When you hear about a bold claim like that, Coming from Harvard scientists, it actually makes you wonder. When Aumauma traveled through our solar system, it actually didn't travel on a normal path. And as you know, as normal objects would travel in, and it's usually due to the sun's gravity, but instead it, it made its own path. So it makes us think maybe this thing was powered by some sort of thrusters. So it could be plausible that it was a spacecraft. Number six, we have a satellite that fell to Earth. Have you guys heard the story of the Cosmos 954? Well, me neither. I had to do the research for this one. Well, back in January 24th in 1978, a Soviet satellite malfunctioned, which prevented a safe separation of its onboard nuclear reactor, so pieces of the cosmos entered Earth, shattering around northern Canada. Now, this is pretty messed up. Luckily, no one was killed by this. Just imagine if, like, North Korean satellite crashed on American soil. I mean, that might spark World War III. So, there is actually a law that everyone has to follow when it comes to space. So under the terms of the 1972 Space Liability Convention, whoever launched an object into outer space is liable for damages caused by that object. So saying that, the Canadian government billed the Soviet Union over six million dollars for the cost of the cleanup and also for additional compensation for future unpredicted expenses. But the USSR paid just three million dollars. From a failed USSR satellite to something that you would never expect coming from space, or should I say you wouldn't expect someone coming from space, an alien? Well, at number five, let me introduce you guys to Fear Felix, who is not an alien. He's just a crazy person. 
Is this real life right now? That is absolutely insane. Why? I have been skydiving, but I jumped from like eight to 10,000 feet. Felix jumped from over 128,000 feet. This guy is absolutely nuts. I think this guy almost reached the moon. Okay, may maybe not quite. <laughs> this guy wasn't inside of Earth and when he jumped, but luckily for him, it was a huge success. Okay, let me take you guys over to Mongolia and at number four. There was this two-ton object that crashed to the earth near the Mongolian capital back in 2019. This object was added to the MUFON witness database, which is actually the UFO network database. I didn't know there was a UFO database. How many aliens are on it? So people are actually believing this foreign object might be a UFO. The object looks like it has a rocket or a jet engine. It seems like the object came crashing down in a field of cows and no one knows what it is. On Reddit, people believed that it might be a hydrogen tank and a lot of people think that this picture might actually be fake because one person pointed out, where's the crater that a heavy and large object would create? I mean, that is a pretty valid point. It's time to time travel for a sec in at number three. Let me take you guys back like 80,000 years ago. I know it's a long time. And let's talk about the Huba meteorite that came crashing down on Earth. It wasn't until 1920 when a farmer found it on his field. Well, this thing weighs 60 tons and it is known to be the largest known meteorite to be found. Today, it has been turned into a national monument. So now it's a great tourist attraction. Moving into number two, let's talk about the meteorite that changed the history on Earth, like literally. More specifically, well, let's talk about the massive meteorite that might have been responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. If you guys don't believe this theory, what wiped out the dinosaurs, let me know in the comment section below and be as stupid as you guys want. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what you guys type down there. Okay, that asteroid that you guys saw must have been huge if it left no dinosaurs behind. It is believed that the asteroid or comet was about 11 to 81 kilometers long, which is super massive. Finally, number one, I saved the scariest for last. NASA actually predicts that in 2023, there's going to be an asteroid that is on a collision course with Earth that can do some pretty serious damage. The asteroid is twice the size of Big Ben, and uh, I looked up Big Ben, and Big Ben is massive. <laughs> and then imagine Big Ben, and then times it by two, and then adding like fire all around it. That could ruin a whole city. Imagine if that hit like a dense city like New York, or what about if it hit like Shanghai, China? A population of over 24 million people. That can wipe out everyone. My biggest question right now is how accurate is NASA? Um, I'm hoping that they're not too accurate. But then again, if NASA wasn't accurate, I don't know if that would be more scarier. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Dragonfly 44. This is what is called an ultra diffuse galaxy, and it is located in the Kama Cluster. This galaxy is of concern because of some interesting observations that were made in relation to it back in 2016. Basically, this galaxy was first discovered because of the influence it is having on our Milky Way galaxy. Astronomers noticed some strange sort of ripples in our galaxy and subsequently realized that this was due to the pull of Dragonfly 44 gravity as it orbited around our own. Of course, once it was realized that this galaxy was the culprit, experts started looking into the galaxy more, and that is when it was realized that this galaxy is actually quite dark. In fact, we can only really see this galaxy due to four bright stars that shine out of the otherwise dark, gloomy galaxy. This has led to the hypothesis that this galaxy must be largely made of dark matter. This is extremely interesting because not only is dark matter one of the most pressing mysteries of space, but this galaxy was found Found to be made up of 99.99% dark matter. Some even say that this galaxy shouldn't even really be able to hold itself together with so few stars. This is all to say that this galaxy is extremely interesting, and with further investigation and research, it may just be the key that helps us understand what in the world dark matter really is and what it's made of. Well, from worms 
to the strange blobs in at number nine. Over in the town of Oakville, Washington, it began to rain in the afternoon. Rain in this area is actually really common, but this rainfall was extremely weird. A strange substance was falling from the sky and it caused a major concern in the area. Well, these things were the size of a grain of rice. Later on the afternoon, a ton of the residents became violently ill. They had difficulties breathing, they had vertigo, blurred vision, and extreme nausea. A bunch of cats and dogs who came into contact with the substance became very sick and they eventually died. One of the residents sent a small sample of the blob to be tested and the results were shocking. The blob actually contained human white blood cells and two types of bacteria. People are saying that it came from an airplane while others are saying that it came from aliens. Well that's gotta be the logical answer, right? The aliens part? A cow dropped into this list at number 8. Okay, wait a minute, how the heck does a cow fall from the sky? What kind of world are we living in? Well, back in 1997, a Japanese fishing ship sank and the men were rescued by a Russian patrol boat in the Sea of Japan. When the men were asked what happened to their ship, they said that a cow fell from the sky and sank it. Well, obviously Russians thought that this was fake news, so they arrested them and put them in jail. Well, that's kind of a harsh punishment, don't you think? Because several weeks later, a member of the Russian Air Force told the Japanese authorities that one of their crew members stole a cow for its beef and took it on their plane. The cow was acting up so they decided to open up the hatch and move. They just pushed the cow out of the plane. I don't know why they didn't just slaughter the cow first and then bring it onto the plane like they had a full on live cow on the plane. I, I wonder if he had to go through security. And are you allowed to bring beef on the plane? I don't know. Or at least sedate this big guy so he's not problematic. Dead birds fly into this list at number 7. I'm going to call this bird again. A man from British Columbia, Canada witnessed dozens of birds falling from the sky. He was driving on a busy highway when all of a sudden he saw the birds suddenly hitting the ground around his car. He said that the birds dove face first into the pavement and died instantly. Well, that sounds super traumatizing. No, seriously, someone call Stephen King and tell him that I have an idea for his next book. I want to forget this has ever happened, so you know what, let's move on. Alright, number six, we have scary meat chunks. Okay, what the heck? Is it too late to go back to the birds? So on March 3rd, 1876, large chunks of a rotting flesh fell from the sky and this took place in Kentucky. Two brave men offered to taste the meat to see what animal it came from. I don't know who would offer to taste it. Uh, that just sounds so ludicrous to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're not the sharpest tools in the shed. They don't know what kind of bacteria could be on the meat. Maybe they like having ringworms or salmonella. Anyways, these two men tasted the meat. Anyways, the two men said the meat tasted like mutton or venison, but a third man said it was bear. Like for sure. <laughs> well how the hell do you know what bear tastes like? I would stay far away from him. Well the mysterious meat came from a projectile vulture vomit. Now, <laughs> now that is just disgusting and these men ate it. Sucks to volunteer on that day. Giant metal balls fall into this list at number five. Giant balls of metal were seen falling from the sky in different parts of the world. Well, that doesn't sound very safe now, does it? People over in Peru found a bunch of huge rocks in a field after they saw this in the sky. Take a look. Yeah. Those rocks are absolutely massive. They could easily wipe out the entire human race if enough of them fell on them. As it turns out, this fireball was actually a Russian space rocket that was re entering the Earth's atmosphere. Vampire fish swim their way onto this list at number four. Over in a small Alaskan town, mysterious giant vampire fish started to fall from the sky. These guys were a foot long and they were known as Arctic lampreys. They have five rows of sharp teeth and they were found laying in gardens, streets, and in parking lots. Families were so freaking terrified by these scary looking fish. Some of them were even too scared to come out of their homes. Well, you know what? I don't blame them. Take a look at their teeth. I'd lock myself into my house for weeks until the town got rid of them. There is no way in hell you would see me out there with these dead vampire fish. Spiders come crawling onto this list, or should I say come falling onto this list at number three. Eric Reese was hired to be a videographer for his friend's wedding. As he was driving to the venue, it started to rain spiders. Now I know this is a lot of people's biggest fear. Thousands of them were falling from the sky. So instead of getting the heck out of there, Eric thought it would be a great idea to pull out his camera and film the whole thing. And to be honest, this is probably something that I would do as well. I'm not afraid of spiders, but maybe if there was like a hundred of them coming down, maybe I'd be pretty terrified. Make it go, Carlo. Make it go, 
Cara, choveu aranha. Nunca vi uma coisa dessa aqui. Meu Deus! But raining spiders isn't actually as strange as it seems. Apparently, the eczemus spider hangs from trees and they create webs that are 65 feet in the air and in trees. They do this to trap insects, but if the wind blows too hard, the spiders can fall off the web, so it looks like uh, that it's raining spiders. Sounds pretty creepy to me. Moving up on this list, number two, we have people. On September 25th, 1978, a woman was sitting in her parked car with her young son when suddenly out of nowhere, a human body crashed just right into her windshield. I mean, that's probably one of the most traumatizing things that she's ever seen. I mean, where the hell did this body come from? Well, a Pacific Southwest plane crashed into another plane, killing 144 people. The person that smashed through the windshield was one of the victims. I just can't imagine what this must have been like. This is actually known as one of the worst aviation crashes in California's history. Blood drips onto our list at number one. In 2008, bloody rain was falling from the sky over a small Spanish city. The residents were scared that this blood rain was part of some sort of hazardous chemicals or it was an act of God. Priests in the village were saying that this rain was a sign from God that people will have to change their sinful ways. But, but they were wrong. According to scientists, this bloody rain was actually a lot less scary. The liquid turned out to be rainwater. It was infused with a type of my Microalgae. When the water mixed with the algae, it changed the pigment to red. Could you imagine if this was actually blood? Now that would be the biggest stain in history. 